What's going on, Champagne Gang? Fizz Fam, Confidence. <laughs> Welcome to Fizz Beat Conversations. Our opinions, their stories. And do you guys remember this story right here? Do me a favor and check it out. Brooklyn Bishop was robbed at gunpoint in the middle of his Sunday sermon today, and it was all caught on camera. The service was being live streamed this morning when he says three to four men walked in with guns. He spoke at length with CBS 2's Lisa Rosner about why he believes he was targeted and his message for the suspects. Five to ten minutes into preaching Sunday morning on Remsen Avenue in Canarsie, Bishop Lamar Whitehead saw the door in the back of the room kick open. How many of you have lost your faith because you saw somebody else die? What you about to go through? Yo, yo, all right, all right, all right, all right. I seen three to four men come in. I said, all right, all right, all right. It's pretty much stating that I don't want. I'm not going to do anything, right? Because I know y'all coming for me. Y'all coming straight to me. I don't want my parishioners hurt, right? I got um, women and children there. As I got down, one went to my wife and took all her jewelry and, um, and had the gun in front of my eight-month-old baby's face. Um, took off my bishop's ring, my, um, my wedding band, and took off my bishop's chain. And then I had chains underneath my robe. Um, and um, he started tapping my neck to see if anything else. So that means they knew. They, they watched and they knew that I have other jury. The church's live stream shows the gun being held on the pastor. They had the guns on, the, on my deacons that was at the door. Whitehead says what you don't see on camera are around 100 congregants who were in the room. Men, women, and children dropped to the floor in silence. My church is traumatized. The women and children are still crying still crying. Babies are still crying. Police say the men took off in a white Mercedes. Whitehead says cops have a license plate and witnesses saw the men change clothes outside. These men, they need to turn themselves in. I forgive you and I'm praying for you, you know, and I hope that God deliver you from the mindset of who you are at this time. Whitehead believes his family was targeted because of the publicity he received when he helped turn in the suspect wanted in the fatal subway shooting of 48 year old Daniel Enriquez in May. I turned them in but the media called me the bling bling bishop. They had my Rolls Royce car all over everywhere and I feel that that played the part in this. I think all pastors should be uh, be able to get permits for pistols. The NYPD is investigating and Whitehead says the mayor and top police brass have called him pledging support to find the suspects. Fortunately, no one was hurt. In Canarsie, Brooklyn, Lisa Rosner, CBS 2 News. In a statement, a spokesperson for Mayor Adams said, quote, no one in this city should be the victim of an armed robbery, let alone our faith leaders and congregants worshiping in a house of God. The NYPD is investigating this crime and will work tirelessly to bring the criminals involved to justice. Yeah, that was a whole mess, but it was all his fault. It was, because why would you, mm -mm, mm -mm, mm -mm. we'll save that section for the secret spill. <laughs> But y'all see this dude right here in the corner. Y'all don't feel like he's way too calm for y'all like it. He didn't move, he didn't budge, he didn't blink, he didn't flinch. Either he's part of B613 or bruh knows something. He's too calm. No fear, no anxiety, nothing. Did anybody really question this man thoroughly? Find out what he knows? But for those of you who don't know about this story, let's rewind real quick before we dive into the details for today. So Lamore Whitehead, 44, was a bishop in Brooklyn and he was robbed while he was streaming his Sunday service. According to the complaint, they snatched over a million dollars worth of jewelry from him and his wife. We're talking Rolexes, diamonds, emeralds, amongst other things I heard. But what? Mm -mm. The police are still investigating the incident and so far, no suspects in this incident have been named or apprehended. But since that incident went viral, our dear pastor found himself in more hot water with fraud charges, some involving his own parishioners. Check this out. I, I got as close as I could without, without going to jail for trespassing. He just said, you gotta leave. So this week, um, I was assigned to go out and speak to the Bishop Lamore Whitehead, very, very colorful and individual who the Post has covered in the past. 
The Bishop has continued to be a very, very interesting person to cover. In July, he was robbed of over $1 million in jewelry. While he was on the air doing his ministry from his Canarsie church, armed guys came in and robbed him on camera of a million dollars in jewelry. That was a few months ago, and now uh, he's back in the news, and this time he's the one being charged. He's being charged with scamming his own parishioners out of $90,000, which he went and spent on luxury goods for himself, allegedly. He's also being charged with extortion. It's alleged that he got $5,000 from a subject and then went back and asked him for a half a million dollar loan in exchange for favorable treatment in some proceeding or something. He's also being charged with making a materially false statement to the FBI. These were all federal charges, by the way. This isn't, you know, state or local. So after his arraignment, where he came out with his lawyer, he didn't say anything. His lawyer basically said that, you know, they were gonna fight all these charges and that he's innocent. And he didn't make any statements at all or answer any questions. So I was then assigned to go to his home in Paramus, New Jersey, to see if we could arrange to sit down and talk about some of this stuff. And as I was sitting there out in front of his house waiting for my photographer, this guy comes out of the house and he means business. And as I opened the door and I said, hi, I'm Kevin, he just said, you gotta leave. That was him. Uh, my photographer had pulled up and was now shooting the exchange that the two of us were having. And when the guy saw the photographer taking pictures of him, he got really nervous and was like, you have to leave, you have to leave now. And he just turned around and ran back in the house. Right after he ran back inside, he must have called the Paramus uh, Police Department because two marked cars from the Paramus PD showed up and I had to explain to him what we were doing there. We basically had to at least try to get his side of the story uh, on these charges. I, I got as close as I could without, without going to jail for trespassing. I tried to get his attention and I explained to him, I was like, Bishop, Kevin Sheehan from the New York Post, all I need is a response from you about these charges. That's that's all I'm here for, that's all I'm here to get. And he just emphatically said, not guilty, okay? My, my response to the charges, I'm not guilty. That was the best he would do. I mean, I, I couldn't get much more than, you know, he was answering the charges with not guilty. That was my latest um, interaction with the bishop. And we're gonna have to now go through the federal court case and see you know, what evidence they're bringing forward in these charges. These charges are really serious. He's facing, uh, the maximum is over 60 years for the charges that he's facing. So he's like 44 years old. He's facing tantamount to a life sentence. So in the video, Mr. Whitehead is heard asking, how many of you have lost your faith because you saw someone else die? Moments before several black clad gunmen stormed into the church in Brooklyn. The irony of that sermon, right? It's unclear how many people were at the service. He said, when I saw them come into the sanctuary with their guns, I told everyone to get down. Everyone just got down, he said on Instagram. So as it turns out, now he's being sentenced to nine years in prison for those charges, including scamming his own followers. In March, he was found guilty of wire fraud, attempted wire fraud, attempted extortion, and making false statements to federal investigators. Prosecutors said that Whitehead used his position as a religious leader to scam people out of money to fund his lavish lifestyle. Remember when he made headlines in 2022 after getting robbed at gunpoint during the live stream that I showed you before? Well, the thieves made off with $1 million dollars in watches, diamonds, and emeralds. Damian Williams, the U.S. Attorney for the Southern District of New York, called Whitehead a con man and said this sentence marks the end of his various schemes. Officials said Whitehead, who led the Leaders of Tomorrow International Ministries in Canarsie, New York, deceived people with false promises and stole their money to buy fancy clothes and cars. One victim, a member of his church, gave him $90,000.
of her savings, or which was her savings, thinking it would go towards a house for her. Instead, it went to his clothing and car payments. He also faked documents to get business loans and tried to extort a Bronx businessman by pretending he had connections to the New York mayor, Eric Adams. Bishop Whitehead is in my prayers, the mayor said on Monday, ahead of the sentencing, according to the New York Times. Whitehead's lawyer said they plan to fight his conviction. Secrets spill. So here's why I say this is all his fault, right? Yeah, I need the church to scoot up for a second for this one. And I try to stay away from these subjects, but y'all, I'm tired. I'm tired. Tired of these stories, these trifling pastors and bishops who receive their licenses from Bishops Are Us and open these churches and destroy people's lives and their faith. And we wonder why the Bible says we make the Bible of no effect. We wonder why. We wonder why the church has more disdain than deliverance. We wonder why. We wonder why people can go to church and leave out the same way. We wonder why. We wonder why people who used to put out cigarettes to walk past a church will light one in them. And we wonder why armed men can waltz into the house of God with no fear, no shame, no conviction, with intentions to rob, steal, and kill. Do you know why? Because when did the word of God become flashy, huh? When did the word of God become bling? Oh, we gonna talk about it. Scoot up. See, the church has changed. It has. When I grew up in the grand old church of God in Christ, you know, you can't join in. You gotta be born in. <laughs> you know, the hand clapping, foot stumping, tongue talking. Uh huh. And when we were in church, baby, bling, bling what? Pastors and bishops wore robes because they didn't want to distract you from the word of God. The choir, baby, we had to wear slips, camisole, skirts to our knees, and it better not be tight. Studs for earrings, and you better have on some stocking. And if it wasn't that, it was a choir robe because we were told you're not advertising when you are worshiping. This is the time to usher people into the presence of God, not usher them between your legs or your cleavage. But now, baby, these dresses and skirts are so tight you can see thy kingdom come. Not just them, but some of these men's shirts are so tight you can see the abs under the abs for me. You can see every flex from every muscle they have because everybody's advertising. Because why? Why do you need to have on all of that jewelry at church? And if you do have all of that jewelry, there better not be one person in church struggling, can't feed their children, don't have a vehicle, don't have a house. There better not be an one because a pastor leaves the 99 to go after the one. So what one are you going after when they're struggling but you seemingly have it all? And if you as the pastor and your wife are the only ones who are benefiting from the words you are preaching, then we aren't serving the same master. Said it, won't take it back. Now I'm not bashing the church, I'm bashing them pastors in the church perpetrating a way of life they know nothing about. You quoting scripture makes you as much of a pastor and child of God as me quoting the Quran makes me a Muslim. Or me having locks makes me Rastafarian. A collar does not make you a preacher. Dogs wear collars. The people look at pastors to give them direction from God. They look at pastors as the expositors, as the prognosticators of the gospel. And y'all are leading them straight to the pits of hell with gasoline draws on and a flaming pitchfork with a match in hand because of y'all behavior and action. Where is your power? You have none. Do you know why? Because you didn't get into it to have godly power. You got into it to have control and power. You got into it to have access to all the scattered ass that you can get because everybody that goes to church is not trying to be Christ-like. Oh, some of the women are just as bad as these trifling ass pastors. Don't get it twisted. You got into it because like many of these New Day pastors, you think church is the new cash cow. There it is. Not all, because we're not gonna put that on all pastors. This is not one of those channels. We don't trash the church over here. We do talk about bad behavior in the church, and there is a difference. Yes, I believe believe in God. Yes, I believe in Christ and Christ crucified. I do. There are still some pastors out there that believe in taking care of their flock. So we're not going to down all pastors. 
We're talking about the trifling ones that happen to come up in our news feed. Because you saw the church as an opportunity to get rich quick. You did. A lot of them do. What I know that y'all don't know, because the church has a problem being honest, is the church is a business. It is. This is what you miss. But it has to be. There has to be order. And there has to be tears of leadership. That you cannot take away. People are on salary in the church. People actually have real jobs behind the scenes in a lot of churches, especially large ones. So it has to operate on a certain plane like a business. Now his church, from the angle that we can see, does not look that big. So it looks pretty small. So he can't have that many people on salary. Maybe his security. But pastors have salaries, as they should. That's not an argument. There is no difference between what the pastor does and what your motivational speaker that you pay $50 to go see motivate you does. Only difference is they're motivating you with the word of God, or they should be when it comes to the church. So I don't have a problem with the pastor having a salary. But your salary should not be greater than the needs of your church. Uh, let's talk about it. If you have $500,000 in your bank account, but the church barely has one, it's a problem. If you have on a $50,000 watch, but your church is leaking, that's a problem. If you have three to four Rolls Royces and Benzes, but you have church members in your church catching the bus, sir, you're going to hell. Don't pass go. Don't collect $200. Straight to hell because what testimony about the delivering power of God are you giving the people when they can't focus on what you're saying that God will do for them because all they can see is their struggle when compared to your false sense of stability because all of your jury is blinding them how what witness are you leaving the people what the good old church colloquialism if he did it for me he can do it for you but you negate to tell them that God didn't do this for you you did it for yourself Oh, I mean, if we're going to talk about it, then let's talk. Scoot up. You can have it like I have it. I'm sure. I'm sure if I chose to scam people, I'm sure I could. Absolutely. But I refuse to build my empire on the backs of other people. That's what Egypt did to Israel. Remember, pastor? And what happened, huh? Punished severely, weren't they? And somehow, you thought you would be exempt. You were robbed for doing the same thing these ninjas in the street are robbed for. Being flashy, flaunting, stunning. That's what you call it, right? You do dumb-ish, you win dumb prizes. And while you're preaching at that, y'all ain't got no real power. You don't. The enemy shouldn't have even felt comfortable crossing the threshold of your church with a weapon to exact any harm because the God in Christ in you, in your church, should have been enough to deter the attack of the enemy. But no, you don't know God. Because if you did, you wouldn't have done any of this. And to find out that not only are you using the money from the parishioners that they pay to the church to do what you told them they are supposed to do unto God, but you are taking the money from your parishioners on top of that and scamming them out of their hard-earned money to fund your lifestyle, ninja the door, the cliff, the ledge, walk the plank, better yet jail under the jail. Matter of fact, create a section beneath the jail and name it hell and send him there. Because how dare you as a man of God, as a shepherd to the people, as a leader, how damn dare you? You looking like you ready for a GQ spread and I bet the majority of your church couldn't shop from the middle shelf less known the top. This makes me so sick to my stomach. Because during a time when people are reaching for something to believe in, some sense of the truth to hold on to, when it looks like all else is falling apart, you're pushing them away from the one they should be able to draw close to because you're running around cosplaying as sheep when you're really a wolf. And not even in sheep's clothing. You're you're destroying the very flock you said God called you to protect, to lead, and to guide. Because it's not about them, it's about you. It's not about them coming up, it's about you coming up. Yeah. All you wolves running around tearing up the church. So much so to the point where true blood-bought believers are turning away from the house of God because it's become the house that man made with pretty words. It's become fashion week. 
It's become the greatest free speed dating spot you can find. It might as well be called Club Sundays because people come in looking like they're the palate for Sunday's dinner. And before I go, let me talk to the church. Not the building, but the believers. I'm not talking about religion. I'm talking about relationship because there's a difference. People who don't know will try to convince you they are one and the same. They're not. Religion was created. Relationship is established. So I want to talk to the believers. And for any of the church thugs that want to get in my comments, please don't make me quantify for you the reasons why I can speak on this subject. Please don't, because you'll probably get your feelings hurt trying to challenge me on church or scripture. Because remember, I didn't join in. <laughs> I was born in. <laughs> Baby, I spent years in the church. Choir director, choir member, Sunday school teacher, Sunday school superintendent, minister, Christian education counsel, teacher's trainer, teacher's trainer program developer. I've taught how to study the Bible. And do you know what my reward was for it all? I'm still waiting because I'll get it in heaven, according to the church. Baby, so there's nothing you can tell me about the church because I've been in it. I've seen it. I've seen the good, the bad, and the ugly. I've seen true deliverance and true deception. But I need y'all to scoot up for a second. Many of us went to church because mama and grandmama made us go. And we go Sunday after Sunday because we were told to. Many are still in the family family church that you grew up in because that's all you were familiar with. Try the spirit by the spirit. Do you know why we say that in church? Because if you have the spirit of God in you and I have the spirit of God in me, then your spirit should reflect mine and mine should reflect yours because we are operating under the umbrella of the same spirit. We always use that scripture, touch not mine anointed and do my prophet no harm. But in order for that scripture to fit the individual has to be anointed by God. See, that's where we miss it at. He has to be God's oracle, not his own. The Bible even says that it's easier for a camel to pass through the eye of a needle. The eye of a needle was a gate, not an actual needle. Then for a rich man to enter into the kingdom of God. Not my word, the Bible, which we preach. But do you know why? Because the more money you have, the more options you have. Mm -hmm. The more options you have, the more potentiality you have to explore those options because money doesn't come with boundaries. God is supposed to give you those boundaries. The God in Christ in you should be your boundary. But when you have none to begin with, the money will bring out in you who you really are. Money brings power. And what do we say about power? Power corrupts. Absolute power absolutely corrupts. Especially if you're already corrupt. So instead of just going to church because your mama used to go or because granny used to go or because you're familiar with it, you need to find you a church that really believes in ministering to the total man. Mind, body, spirit, and soul, not just your pocket. The church is a hospital. It sees all sorts of people, sick, broken, bruised, hurting, confused, on the verge of giving up. The one person in the hospital who shouldn't be sick is the pastor. And if you start seeing signs of sickness, you need to walk the other way. One thing you must always remember is the oil, the power, the anointing. It drips from the head down. So if the top is infected, everything attached to it is infected. That's why you have to be careful what you attach to. Those parishioners in that church were affected when those gunmen came in. You can't tell me they weren't. They had to deal with the consequences of this pastor's sickness. What was his sickness? I'm so glad you asked. Hubris, conceit, vanity, egoism, haughtiness, superiority, presumption, self-importance, overconfident, pridefulness, just to name a few. He had children in there who were affected by this sickness, who are probably scared to go to church now, traumatized because an ignoramus with a mic decided the bling on the bishop was more important than the office of the bishop. Here's my suggestion, right? My suggestion is on this Sunday, when some of y'all open the doors of your churches, you invite in your newest member, Jesus Christ, because he probably doesn't know what the inside of a lot of your churches looks like. So that's all I have for this one. Thank you for joining me for Fizz Feed Conversations, our opinions, their stories. Until next time, see you soon.